everybody's a mad master <laughs> to another video the election selection process. So this is this one's a little bit different than maybe you know I'm gonna I'm gonna be a little bit more conciliatory towards certain people that I probably shouldn't maybe according to it's not politically correct to do so. And I'm just gonna talk about this a little bit because I I have a lot of complex ideas. It's a little more, more layered and nuanced than a lot of people want to be nowadays. So I'm just going to say this, like, uh, what I propose, it's all the dude bro podcasters, Bernie Sa and Bernie Sanders, people like that, should try to push, dare I say, push Trump, influence Trump to be more left-wing or more populist or whatever you want, however you want to put it. And the reason for this is because people were talking about that with Biden, like, I voted Biden, and I know he's not perfect, but I'm going to push him left. So, ironically, I'm not, you know, I'm kind of violating my own ideas by saying this because I didn't think he would. But, you know, there's certain things that he did do that are, like, a little bit more better. <laughs> and you could say they're bad, but, you know, they're more left-looking from the outside. Of course, it could be just placating his base and stuff. So... I don't think it necessarily worked with him, but I'd say like it, it seemed to have some effect, but you know, with other things, you know, a lot of it was just for show, you know, of course. Now with regards to Trump though, he's a different type of politician. He's not like, um, you know, the thing is he's not tied to the party like uh, Biden would be, you know, career politician all his whole life. So I think this, this could be a real thing, and it already seems to have an effect. Like, for example, recently Mike Pompeo, you know, he, he said he was not going to rehire him because MAGA does not like him. He does, they don't like neocons, or they like kind of pseudo, pseudo non-neocons sometimes, unfortunately. But, well, that remains to be seen. It could hire someone worse, who knows, that wants to go to war where, with everybody. But, yeah, that's one thing. Another thing is, like, a really specific story is, I think it was Kim Kardashian went to the White House during his last term with Kanye West. <laughs> and they got the, uh, you know, the First Step Act pushed and in place. So this, and that was, that's law, you know, law enforcement reform, you know, stuff like that. So a lot of times it's what's popular, who, who's, pop, who's around this guy, who, pray, who kisses his ass. And my whole thing was during the, whole, the first administration, why didn't they do that? Why didn't left do that? They were just attacking him left and well, not left and right politically, but left and right, if you know what I mean. So they should have just like had John Stewart go visit the White House. Hey, Trump, you know, you're, I loved you on The Apprentice. You know, what do you think about this? You know, I've talked about this on this channel before years ago, but they did not do that because they just because they are so attached to the establishment. A lot of these people, they're they're blind or they're just making too much money from bashing Trump or from their donors or whatever, you know, hence me praising TYT for actually talking about this lately. So this could be a real opportunity for a better future because for example, uh, Ronald Reagan, you know, I'm not a big fan, you know, he's, there's a, a lot of dead bodies in Latin America is an indirect result of him. Probably a lot of crack cocaine got into the uh, United States because of him too, at least indirectly. So I'm not a big fan of the guy for a lot of reasons, but they had a, you know, he was really influenced by films, you know, he's like, I don't do a good Reagan impression, but some people seem to like it, but I'm not, I'm going to try not to, he's like, you know, go where no, no one has gone before, you know, and like, he quoted or make my day, you know, he, he quoted movies and stuff, and uh, quoted Back to the Future and Dirty Harry and stuff, he was a movie guy, because he was an actor, of course. So he saw, he watched a lot of movies in the White House. And there was a cable movie called The Day After that happened in, 19, I think it was 40 years this year. Or maybe it was last year, 40 years. And this whole movie is, of course, about nuclear war and Armageddon. So he claims, or some of the, his advisors claim that he saw this movie. And he was so freaked out. He was so scared by this film. I don't think he immediately called Mikhail Gorbachev when he, you know, got, got into power, but he was like, yeah, we got to do something about this because he was totally pushing that nuclear stuff. I mean, there's a lot of political stuff that happened as a result of that. 
the antithesis thesis thing, you know, anti-Reagan bands, anti-Reagan art, anti-Reagan movies, anti-Reagan comics, Hellblazer, my favorite comic book of all time, was very much anti-Thatcher Reagan, you know, early on, I'm just saying. Just saying, a lot of the stuff is actually good. The anti-Trump stuff is kind of cringe, because the culture is just so void and recycled and boring garbage, you know, but at least back then, it inspired a lot of good things. I'm going to do a video about this later, too. I already did it, sort of, <laughs> but I'm gonna read. I'm gonna do another version of it. So he was inspired by this, like to sign arms treaties and stuff with the, with the Soviets. And you know that, I mean, that was basically it. You know, for the Cold War, at least at that time, of course. But now people are pushing that again, pushing the Cold War and stuff with Putin and all that. So I mean, that, that's what I'm saying. It's like Trump is kind of like that. He's like kind of easily influenced in certain ways by certain things. So I think that that's what, what should be done. Like Joe Rogan should call him. I mean, just say, hey, Trump, legalize marijuana. Done, you know? I mean, I, I dare say Bernie Sanders. <laughs> I don't know if this sounds insane, but Bernie Sanders, if, he's really, if he really wants to stick a knife to the back of the DNC establishment, he will call up Trump and try to meet with them and say, hey, you know, what about this? What about that? And if Trump lis listens, or he kisses his ass, like, oh, you're doing a great job, you know? You did a great job at the election. I literally like this. Trump ignores that stuff, all the bad stuff about him, you know, that someone said. Of course, there's money involved a lot of the time, too. Not always, though. Like I said, I don't think I don't think uh, Kim Kardashian paid him to do the first step act. But I, I could be wrong about that, too. So that should be the case. And if you really want to, like, Bernie could just stab the establishment in the back and do this. It would just be amazing. I would just, like, cheer if that happened. <laughs> he calls, he starts hanging out with the guy. And, you know, I've been attacked online for saying, like, I'm defending a, a sax predator, you know, to say, you know, just use some code words, by sort of defending the, elect, like, what happened in the election. But let me tell you something. You know, didn't... Uh, Bill Clinton have 13 accusers or something like that. And, you know, got, you obviously got convicted of one of the things, you know, with the power that, you know, a lot of the same people that will attack me for defending Trump about, like, not talking about that, will, def will ignore Bill Clinton. Will, you know, and then they'll also attack, like, age relationships, power dynamics, like, age gaps, like Monica Lewinsky and Bill Clinton. But Bill Clinton was trotted out by Kamala's team, you know, in, in Michigan, especially trying to gaslight Muslims and stuff into, into supporting the, you know, Israel incursions. So anybody that does that to me has got to account for that, in my opinion, you know, and I'm not saying that Trump didn't do anything or did do it, did do something, or I'm not, I don't know. I'm not a court of law. The Gene Carroll stuff, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what I was going to say about that, but, you know, it's just... There's some, there's some things that don't make a lot of sense about that. Like, back then, was she his type? You know, he did hang out with Epstein. I will say that for a fact, that he probably did hang out with Epstein and probably knew about Epstein stuff. But so did Bill Clinton. Yeah, anyways, I'm digressing. So that's what I think. Okay, we, we're stuck with it, is what I'm saying. We're stuck with it, bad or good. And we have to deal with it. You have to move on in life. I lived four years under the guy. My life was so-so. And sometimes it was great. Like 2018, 2019 were just killer years for me for career reasons and other reasons. But, uh, you know, I just, and, and I was really advanced in life until, you know, things took a nosedive the next year. Or early, actually late 2019 is so when things started to take a nosedive in my life. But I'm not going to go into every reason why in this video. But... You know, it's like, it'll be good and bad. I don't know. We'll see. But those podcasters, all the people, Theo Vons and Joe Rogans and Tim Dillons, who I loved. I saw Tim Dillon live just a couple, like a month ago or less than a month ago, I think. And it was awesome. And then he had J.D. Vance on. I'm like, uh, I don't know about this. But then his recent pod, his recent pods have been pretty good. So I don't know. That's the thing, like. If you're gonna, if we're gonna have those people influence Trump, then I'd rather have those guys influence Trump than some, even some establishment Democrat dumbass that's been at it for 40 years, like that just wants to water this watered down crumbs to feed to their base. And it's like that's what's been going on, you know. That's why Trump won is because these people are so vapid. 
are so robotic and lifeless. And that's why, you know, that's, that is why he won is because he may lie, right? Let's, let's just say he, like Washington Post took the, uh, took, tra kept track of his lies for a while. Oh, 2001 lies in five months. But he doesn't lie about who he is. Like he comes out, that's him. You know, when you have these other pol faceless politicians just going, you know, just, they seem so fake. You know, you watch them, they seem like actors, like Trudeau, like watching him, like, I'm Trudeau, uh, you don't have any free speech anymore, uh, you know? And that's that's pretty much what people see. But Trump just says, says what's on his mind, he's just like, he's fucking crazy. I love the McDonald's thing and the, tr the truck the garbage truck thing and the speech after the garbage truck thing where he's still burning the garbage truck uniform it's just it's comedy gold and i didn't vote i didn't vote for him so but i'm just saying you know i i can see why people did in a lot of ways but yeah there's some bad stuff he said some racist stuff that central park five that shit was ridiculous so that he like was so like unquestioningly un cynical about the charges and there's a lot of stuff like that there's other things too, though. There's there's little things. I mean, he has to account for the uh, many BIPOC people that voted for him this election, and, and all the women too. He has to do that now. He has to be account he's accountable to them because they voted for him, not just white rednecks who uh, believe QAnon anymore. You know, not that that's that's only people who voted for him, but that was a, a bigger percentage of them last last time he won. So, or didn't win, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't know what I think about that. But anyways, that's about all.